good afternoon everybody i'm going to present before you an uh, an upcoming accelerator center in germany at darmstadt and uh, indian involvement now i will uh, start where essentially bedango uh, continued this is the diagram which we, i think everybody knows that this is a big bang and this is where we are today and this is the time passes by and this is the energy now i will uh, request you to draw your attention at this point which is 10 to the power minus 5 second where it says nucleons form so if you draw a li imaginary line there are quarks and gluons and electrons and everything on this side but there is no quark in this side so the quarks got confined inside or caged inside protons and neutrons and that's the confinement so that means below this microsecond or, or at the microsecond old universe it must have been in a deconfined phase which we need to study in the laboratory now conceptually there are two ways extremely that you can reach there one is of course by heating that means you pump up lot of energy and there will be lot of particles produced and then you will get a soup of quarks and gluons where everybody will kind of lose their identity where from they have come from which is has a similarity with early universe and the another one is compression that means you compress in such a way that inside one proton you might have three or four protons in the same volume and then also you will reach here which is having a similarity which is at the core of neutron star now the way we study the whole field of physics as dr mohanty also showed is that we have a phase diagram where there is a net baryon density which as i said is highest for the neutron star almost temperature is zero and then there is the temperature axis and these are the different laboratories namely relativistic heavy ion collider large hadron collider which essentially pumps up the energy to high and then gets a system which is at very high temperature and very low density and there is another one which uh, this was the gsi which is so i will come back to that later which might reach there now this phase diagram i saw essentially when i started my career maybe three decades earlier now the phase diagram if you look today uh, this is how it looks like in the sense So there is already a point which has been put together, and then I think it is agreed upon that there is a phase transition which is crossover. There is no hint of critical point yet, but then this this place has become very crowded. It is just one line, and there is almost nothing. So there is a colored superconductor. There is a quarkionic phase which is in between the uh, quark gluon plasma phase and the hadronic phase, and of course there is a neutron star, and then there are all all sorts of things that are there in the theory. so the point what i am trying to make here is that yes this is very important this is going on this is the one which has drawn a renewed attention to the community and this is obvious uh, from the number of experiments uh, which are coming up uh, since then as you can see there is star uh, bilanga has said that there is a star beam energy scan they started with 200 gev they have come up to around 7 there is a fixed target which even go up to 3 gev there is a nika in dubna which is supposed to come up there is the sps cern which is ns61 and sign there is the hades which is running at gsi up to 2 gv and this is the one which i am going to talk about which is compressed baryon emitter experiment which will be at fair facility and this is my connection to this physics of building fair because there is a renewed interest in high density nuclear matter uh, which i am going to discuss here now this is the beginning in fact it's not the beginning but it is some kind of uh, you can say end up uh, discussions which is on 7th february 2007 where there is a signing uh, between two ministers our minister of vidyan science and technology and uh, uh, her, his counterpart in germany where they said that india will contribute up to 3% in building this facility which is called fair now where is fair many of you might not know is that now if you go to uh, the road uh, means from frankfurt air this is frankfurt airport and there is a road and there is a small village called wixhausen and there is a road called one plank street that's the name and there is a laboratory named gsi which in germany in english called hevia and facility which is existing for more than 40 years and this is the laboratory which is credited with discovery of seven periodic table elements including dumstadium where it is situated and then they decided to make it an international facility and this is what is fair so these are the elements which are there seven of them borium hysium meitnerium dumstadium rongium and copernicium but then this is how the fair conceptually look like this is what is existing gsi 
And this is all colored one is supposed to be the part of the fair facility as it has been seen or conceptualized at the beginning. So beam will come from here. There will be some acceleration here, which is existing. This is called CIS 18, 18 Tesla meter. And then it will be accelerated in a ring called CIS 100 and 300, the same ring. Uh, depending on the magnetic field that it will pump in, you may get 100 or 300, and then beam will go uh, delivered to different facilities. Now, the uniqueness of air is not that it is only a particle physics research, but it has some other physics reach, which I will discuss. Now, India is the third largest uh, contributor after Germany and Russia. Another feature is that uh, it is not a high energy machine. It will essentially go up to 45 AGV maximum for ions, uh, and uh, in the last phase, but more importantly, it is a high intensity machine. It will have 10,000 times higher intensity in primary beam, 100 times in radioactive ion beams for nuclear physics research. And of course, there will be four parallel operations in FAIR. Now, India has been contributing in two, phase, two uh, aspects. One is accelerator equipment, another one is doing experiment. In accelerator equipment, we are supposed to deliver 678 of power converter, ultra stable for both uh, for the magnet, superconducting and normal conducting. 339 have already been shipped and it is accepted. We are supposed to uh, deliver ultra high vacuum chambers of 71 numbers, 58 have been shipped. And there is a device called beam stopper, which essentially stops the uranium high intensity uranium beams. So this needs a huge, uh, very delicate design and uh, building, three units of them. The design is over, purchase order has been issued. And there are coaxial power cables of 194 kilometer. There are signal cables of 16 types. And of course there are shielding. And there is the design of superconducting magnets. These are our uh, placed contributions. Now this is the power converter. This is the picture, uh, you see we have to build 680, this is one unit, like that it is, the picture has been taken in ECIL Hyderabad, they have built it, and this is the picture and in Germany, so these are the our power converters which are lying there, in their storehouse. These are the vacuum chambers, this is built by a company in Bangalore nearby called Vacuum Technique, and this is in their factory, all the vacuum chambers are ready to be shipped, and this is when it reached Germany. So these are the equipment they have been already supplied. And this I want to make a little bit better mention of that because this is a device where uranium beam, if it falls, then it will deposit all its energy here and it will essentially like an explosive device. So you have to have proper cooling for that. And this design has been done completely. It was not existing by a lab called Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute, Durgapur, which is a CSI lab. Now I come to the fair physics. Fair, as I said, unlike any other facility, will essentially cover the region from today till 10 to the power minus six or close to that. Now, this is the one which you said QCD physics. That means this, there is an experiment called Panda, which will look into the uh, PP bar uh, collisions and look at the resonances to understand the hadronic structures. The, and then of course, our field of physics. Then there is a huge, because GSI is essentially a nuclear physics lab with radioactive ion beams and then atomic and plasma physics research and applications, namely space and biophysics applications. Now, Indian community are involved in two uh, basic areas. One is nuclear structure, astrophysics, and reaction. As you know, this is the stable uh, nuclei line with N versus Z, almost equal. Now, what will be covered in GSI is essentially this region where the neutron number is high. So these are all neutron-rich nuclei, which will allow you to study the halos, which is around the nucleus, neutron skin, and there are some very interesting resonances, and of course, the, uh, this uh, side of the neutron star. And these are the cross sections, so it goes down as you go towards this, but this will be the specialty, and then uh, we'll do experiments with this. So FAIR will provide unique access to many nuclei relevant in explosive nuclear synthesis. And this is the question that we'll address. Yeah, so these are the detectors which have been built for nuclear physics experiment in VECC, neutron detectors which will be shipped uh, to Germany. Now I'll come to our kind of physics. Now this field of physics where it is high density, high baryonic density matter has got a renewed interest after 2017, after the discovery of gravitational wave along with the electromagnetic signal. Now there have been a calculation by a GSI scientist, this is, these are the authors and reference, uh, which was done in 2010, 
which essentially says the luminosity of the uh, elements which are produced and then it decays in the radioactive way. So what is the luminosity with time? So this is his plot. And these are the results after 2017, which essentially matches. So what we are trying to say here, that we are uh, this in, in that laboratory where two neutron stars merge, there is a creating a system which is essentially similar to the one which we are studying in the lab. So there have been some more calculations. This is the calculation, this is the reference for neutron star merger. And you see this is the density, which is around three or four times the nuclear matter density of the core. And this is the temperature, which is around 10 MeV. This is what is the neutron star merger. And this is what is the heavy ion collisions at 1.5 GeV gold gold collisions in semi-peripheral. So this is the density again, which is about three times the nuclear matter density. And this is the temperature, which is a little bit higher because this is like 90 to 100 MeV, not like 10 MeV. So what is the connection between these two? The connection is essentially the equation of state. If you can understand the equation of state here, we can certainly apply here. If you can understand here, we can test and see how, how it looks like. This is the experiment. That is uh, only one experiment that is being built at FAIR for this. The name of the experiment, compressed baryonic matter experiment. It's a fixed target experiment, unlike ALICE, which are collider. And this one important thing here is that this is a facility, as this is one experiment. So the main idea is to uh, detect in full glory the dielectron signals, both dielectron as well as dimions. So that we can understand the invariant mass, we can change the mass, uh, study the change in masses or even chiral symmetry restoration. So this is the ring imaging Cherenkov counter, which is for, uh, this is the magnet and there is a silicon detector. And this is the device which we are building. This is the complete device. The way it will take data in two modes, this guy will go away and this guy will take in and maybe take six months data or the, uh, then the other guy will come. So it is either in dielectron mode or in dimion mode. So what is there in dimion mode detector? So we have, we have to understand something with 10 megahertz collision rate, which is unprecedented, it never happened. We have to determine the vertex with 50 micron accuracy. We have to identify both electrons and leptons and hadrons. Can someone? Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, so another important thing is that as the collision rate is very high, we cannot have the luxury to ask for trigger and take the data. We have to have a free streaming with a timestamp associated with the signals, and then you collect them and do in computer all the reconstruction. So that is why it is called 4D. Now what we are doing in India, we are doing building this whole device, which is having the absorber, uh, which will absorb the hadrons. Unlike a single absorber, this is called segmented absorber. And there will be chambers of detectors which will essentially track the muon passing through this. And there is a silicon detector which will essentially give you the momentum. Now the challenge is that this will handle like uh, something like 400 kilohertz per centimeter square. These guys will 130 kilohertz per centimeter square. And this is how they will look like. So not all detectors will do the job. So we have been working in VECC for development of this kind of detector called GEM, gas electron multiplier, which has been tested to work up to three megahertz per centimeter square. This is nothing but a gaseous chamber, uh, which works, the amplification happens in a foil, which is a polyimide foil with 30 micron, 50 micron thickness, and there are 40 micron hole, 140 micron, 70 micron dia hole, 140 micron as pitch. And so when there is an electric field around this, then the electron get multiplied. If you make a cascade, then you won't have to put a lot of voltage in that. So this is the advantage. This is in our lab. They have been put together. And this is one gem chamber full size for the experiment. Now, before uh, FAIR starts operating, there have been one phase called phase zero, where all the detectors which will come in CBM in their small form, like we have put two chambers, instead of that, we will have 130 chambers have been put together to a beam, which is nickel, nickel, and gold, gold with 1.23 or 1.93. And this is a structure of the beam. Uh, this is when the beam is on, this is on spill, this is off spill. And these are the two, de our detector, JM1 and JM2. And this is the detector built by Heidelberg University called Time of Flight. And this is the time correlation, which is fantastic. This is a special correlation, which also looks nice. So that means the detectors work. Now I go uh, to my final kind of uh, slides, where I show the status of the facility as of today. So this is how it would look like in 2017, 
where all the forests were essentially cut and the place was made. Then there are a lot of problems in the sense there are regulatory uh, restrictions which has increased and so the project got delayed. And this is what is the existing GSI. And this is how it looks like today. So all the tunnel is ready now. Uh, this is a 60 meter wide and 20 meter deep tunnel. There are two, uh, this, uh, this will house both CIS 100 and CIS 300. This is GSI, there is a connection of beam coming here. And this is the tunnel from where the beam will go from CIS 18 to CIS 100. It will essentially a stair and going down. And this is the main tunnel where all the magnets and uh, other equipments will be stationed. And this is the other buildings which are being built now. This is a very busy place if anybody visits the place now. And this is our experimental hall, which is ready. So if you want, we can start installing our equipment there once the services are all ready. This is how it will look like when everything is ready. Fair is in its full glory. So everything will be underground. You have to get back your forest back because that is how the arrangement is. And uh, of course, this is the GSI and this is where you, all the experiment will happen. Now, like many other uh, large projects, this has also gone through its own problem. It is delayed first, as you said, because of the regulatory uh, restrictions. And then recent international events involving Russia because Russia is 18% contributor to the whole 3 billion euro project. So one can imagine that uh, what will happen. And so now uh, the expected beam was in 2018 initially, then in 2024, now the date given is 2027 in somehow in cartel version, but let's hope things work by then. So this is where FAIR will explore a range of physics goals, including strongly interacting matter under extreme density, nuclei under extreme conditions of neutron by proton number, Indian participations includes key accelerator equipment and advanced detectors, and we hope to overcome various issues soon and start taking data. Before ending, this is my last slide. What happens? It's not showing here, it's showing here. Anyway, I'm just reading it. This is basically uh, a new pack recommendation. Yeah, this is a new pack recommendation, which was in 2017. It says FAIR is a European flagship facility for the coming decades worldwide unique. It will allow for a large variety of unprecedented forefront research in physics and applied sciences. It focuses on the structure and evolution of matter. It's multifaceted research opens a new era in our understanding of the fundamental building blocks of matter and the forces as well as the evolution of our universe. The new possibilities for research in Darmstadt are unique and are expected to produce groundbreaking new insights for nuclear research. I believe this is relevant even today. Thank you. Thank you, Subhashish. Let's have some questions. Uh, are there at least some things that can start before uh, this projected? I mean, not maybe CBM, yeah. but the low energy. Uh, I, I'll tell you. Uh, there is CIS 18, which is running. And uh, so far as nuclear physics research is concerned, uh, they can do good, good bit of it using CIS-18 because there are uh, there is a fragment separator already existing, not the superconducting one. But the problem is that uh, the yield of those uh, means neutron rich nuclei are so low that you have to wait along. Mm -hmm. So that research is going on that is a part of phase zero. And so far as CBM is concerned, we are running at 1.2 GeV. We cannot go beyond that. We can test all our detectors with that and maybe with some particles like lambda yield and others. That is being done, yes. Okay, let's thank Subhashish again.